This tutorial will show you how to install Model 6180 Vertical In-Place Inclinometer Systems. Model 6180 In-Place Inclinometers use quick connecting ball joints to provide an easy, toolless connection of the sensors. To operate the quick connectors, depress the barb on the locking pin and then remove the pin from the sensor. Next, pull back on the spring-loaded sleeve and position the ball stud of the other sensor into the receiver as shown. Capture the ball stud by releasing the sleeve. Make sure the sleeve returns to its initial position. Finally, reinsert the locking pin to prevent the sleeve from accidentally retracting during installation. Before beginning the installation, the inclinometers should be checked for proper operation. Begin by laying the sensors out in numerical order on a clean, dry surface. Connect the sensors together by plugging the male connector of each one into the female connector of the next sensor in the string. Make sure to align the orientation dots on the outside of the two connectors. This will ensure that the pins and receptacles on the interior of the connectors align correctly. Once all the sensor cables have been connected, plug the female end of the readout cable into the male connector of the top sensor. Then connect the readout cable to a Model 802038 addressable bus converter, PC, readout, or data logger. For easy, automated, and remote data collection, use the Model 8900 GeoNet data hosting system to read the IPI string. If the readout cable has bare leads, the conductors function as follows. Red is power, black is ground, white is the positive RS-485 lead, and green is the negative RS-485 lead. Pick up one of the sensors and hold it in a steady vertical position. The sensor reading should be close to the factory vertical reading that is provided on the calibration report. Tilting the sensor in the A plus or B plus direction should yield increasing readings. If the sensor is tilted in the A- or B- direction, the reading should decrease. The temperature reading given by the sensor should be close to the ambient temperature. Repeat this process with all the remaining sensors in the string. Once the tests are complete, disconnect the string from the readout and disconnect all the sensors from one another. If any of the sensors fail the preliminary tests, consult the product instruction manual for troubleshooting tips. Once it has been confirmed that the sensors are functioning properly, the assembly process can begin. Geocon strongly recommends attaching a safety cable to the bottom sensor. The safety cable can be used to lower or retrieve the assembly and will also prevent any accidental loss of sensors down the borehole. To attach the safety cable, locate the bottom sensor of the string. It will be the only sensor with wheel assemblies on the top and bottom. Slide the eyeball of the safety cable through the connection holes located near the bottom end of the sensor housing. Next, thread the provided nuts onto the eye bolt and tighten them against one another using two 5 16 inch wrenches. Secure the other end of the safety cable to the top of the casing or another stable point nearby. Suspend the bottom sensor inside the casing by inserting a screwdriver, rod, or something similar through the support holes in the housing and then lowering the sensor until the screwdriver sits on top of the casing. Geocom recommends pointing the A-plus axis of the sensor in the direction of the anticipated movement, for example, towards the excavation being monitored or downslope in slope stability applications. Each time a sensor is inserted in the casing, make sure to orient it in the same direction as the first sensor. All sensors in the string must be facing in the same direction for the string to function properly. Connect the next sensor in the string to the bottom sensor using the quick connectors as previously described. Then plug the male connector of the bottom sensor into the female connector of the second sensor. Again, make sure to align the orientation dots on the outside of the two connectors. The mated connectors can be taped together for extra security if desired. Use a tie wrap to secure the bottom sensor's cable to the tube of the second sensor. This will keep the cable 
close to the sensors and provides a strain relief for the two connectors. Remove the screwdriver from the bottom sensor and insert it into the support holes of the second sensor. Carefully lower the strain until the screwdriver is once again resting on top of the casing. Connect the rest of the sensors and the string in a similar manner. Then connect the readout cable to the top sensor and to the readout or data logger, as was done for the preliminary tests. To ensure that the string is installed at the correct depth, the suspension cable length needs to be calculated. The length of the suspension cable determines the depth of the string. To calculate the correct suspension cable length, take the total string length, that is, the combined length of all the sensors, and subtract it from the desired depth of the bottom sensor in the string when measured from the top of the casing. Pull the bare end of the suspension cable through the eyelet located on the bottom of the suspension bracket. Next, loosely attach one of the supplied cable clamps, approximately three and a half inches, from the bottom of the eyelet so that the threaded ends of the U-bolt are facing towards the live end of the cable. Hook the U-shaped thimble through the bottom eyelet of the suspension bracket. Then seat the suspension cable in the channel of the thimble. Adjust the distance between the shoulder of the suspension bracket and the end of the suspension receiver until it is equal to the calculated suspension cable length. Install the cable clamp nuts so that they grip the cable firmly, but do not yet tighten them down with a wrench. Install a second cable clamp near the base of the thimble. Then adjust the first cable clamp so that the turn back length measures approximately three and a quarter inches. Apply tension to the cable to remove any slack. Then double check the suspension cable length to make sure it is still correct and adjust if needed. Tighten all four cable clamp nuts to a torque specification of four and a half foot pounds. If desired, a third cable clamp can be installed between the first two for extra security. Trim any excess from the cable so that the dead end is approximately 3 eighths of an inch away from the bottom cable clamp. If no cable cutters are available, the end of the cable may be wrapped with tape and then taped to the main length of the suspension cable. Attach the receiver of the suspension cable assembly to the top sensor using the quick connector. Remove the screwdriver from the top sensor and lower the string until the suspension bracket is resting on the casing. The top rim of the casing needs to be relatively square to ensure that the suspension bracket seats properly. Readings may be taken immediately after installation. However, Geocom recommends evaluating the data over a period of time to determine when the string has sufficiently stabilized and when the zero readings should be established. The hardware portion of the installation is now complete. For more information on installing and using Model 6180 in-place inclinometers, refer to the provided instruction manual. Make sure to check out all the other tutorials that are available on geocon.com.